Welcome back for another episode on the Poor Man's GTR. It's been a fair while since we featured the R34 on the channel, since we've been catching up on the S14 Sylvie episodes. But everybody cares about the R34, so we're going to give you guys a bit of an update, and this is what the, this episode is mainly going to be a big update of what has been happening behind the scenes. So, as you can see, we've got a fresh, beautiful paint job that's going to come in the next episode. We've got glass back in the car, and excuse the mess, but we have a dashboard and some of the interior has been going back in slowly. And under the bonnet, Oh, we have a bonnet latch. Under the bonnet, we have some beautifully painted valve covers, as promised, red. That and more to come in this episode of the Poor Man's GDR. Alright, so this detailed update, we're going to start from the engine bay. As I've said before, we've painted the rocker covers, the colour uh, people have chosen in the comment section. It is red, but unfortunately it is not actually red. As you can see, it's more of a bronze than it is a red. The internet lied to me and I got the wrong colour mixed up at the paint shop, but I'm more than happy to sand the Mac and redo them the correct colour if you don't like them. Now, another update is we have pulled all the intercooler pipes off and we're going to get them bead rolled. And one more update with the engine bay is the cylinder head is going to have to come off for a certain reason that we're going to have to get to in a future episode. But yeah, there is a little little bit of a bit of a hiccup there. So we'll move to the interior. So we are moving into the interior of the car. So we're gonna talk about what we have done, what we are planning on doing, and why we have not put an R34 GTR interior in it. So, we're gonna talk about why we didn't put a GTR interior in it. By the time you buy the GTR rear seats, GTR front seats, cluster, MFD, all the door cards, good luck finding it all in one batch. Um, and even if you do, you're probably going to look at spending upwards of $10,000. Um, if you don't agree with me, jump on eBay, Yahoo Auctions, or whatever you wanna do. Uh, the seats themselves are three thousand dollars plus if you want the v-spec two seats like the black ones they're probably five grand and above just for a pair of seats they're 20 years old and um i think we can do better on version two of the car this being version one of the car keeping a very budget friendly build in mind what we have done is we have reused the majority of the gtt interior that has come with the car but get, given it a bit of a cleanup and a bit of a refresh so the car factory comes with a lot of cream, a lot of gray carpets, gray headliners and stuff. So we have pulled the entire interior apart. We have given everything a nice scrubbing. And then once everything dried, we have painted it using VHT fabric paint. We've painted the carpet and the headliner. Um, you're gonna use about six cans, six or seven cans doing those two pieces. We've painted the rear seats as well and Moving towards the front of the car, we're going to put some nice bucket seats in the car when the time comes. Uh, the door cards we have in the back, we just maybe we'll get that little trim piece re-trimmed into something nicer. The cluster, we are using an R34 GTT cluster. Obviously, version 2 of the car, when the budget is there, we're going to put a nice Nismo cluster in it. Um, as for the MFD, we're not running an MFD this time round. And when the time does come, I won't be putting the factory MFD unit in. Instead, I'll use the plastic, make a custom screen, and run it off whatever engine management is running the car and run it into the screen. Um, obviously, it's more modern. And I think we're going to move towards the boot. So, moving towards the back of the car, uh, we have relocated the battery, battery to the boot. We've relocated the fuse box to the boot. Um, yeah, it's still a mess. It's all sound deadened, um, but yeah, we're not gonna talk much about the boot. Sound deadening along the inlet quarter panels as well, so the car should be super, super sturdy. One thing I wanna add is that I use sound deadening on the entire interior. So the entire floor, behind the back seats, 
behind the headliner. So that's super, super sturdy. Obviously you don't want to knock with your knuckles, but just the palm on the inside of the quarter panels. And I'm also going to do the inside of the doors. Um, you do make a bit of a sacrifice because you add a little bit of weight to the car, but overall it should make for a lot nicer ride. And obviously I've done the entire boot as well. Now for anyone wondering what brand of sound editing I used, I used this company called STP. I'm pretty sure it's made in Russia and you get 12 of these big sheets in a box. I'm on my second box. And um, yeah, so as I said, I've gone through an entire box and to be honest, I've probably gone overkill with how much sound editing I've put in this car, but I figured better safe than sorry. brakes uh, as you can see we don't have shiny Brembo's instead we have just re uh, used some R34 GTT brakes um, they were about $400 for the front and rears they came with uh, brake pads rotors with plenty of meat on them so I figured we're gonna reuse them just give them a bit of a spray paint and they'll do for now I would love a set of Brembo's mainly for the visual aspect they're visually appealing but we're just gonna have to do with what we have at the moment and People are probably going to get fussy now. Well, you don't have a GTR interior, you don't have a GTR engine, and now you don't even have GTR brakes. What is happening? Um, and to be honest, these are all bolt-ons. You buy fancier brakes, you, you take these off, and you install the new ones on within a day. You buy some fancy seats, a new cluster, an MFD or whatever, you pull all that stuff out, and you put all your new stuff in within a day. You buy a fancier engine, ready to go. You pull this one out, you put the fancier engine in within a weekend. It, it is all a matter of money. As you can see, we're just trying to build a dream car on a bit of a budget so I can actually drive it and enjoy it as soon as I can instead of waiting around for another five years and losing motivation over something that the internet is going to like more than this. But as you can see, the body, the body is how I want it. I've, I've redone my paint job because I wasn't happy the first time. I've got the front end I want. I've got everything I want, but obviously we will be upgrading the car as time goes by. Now with the brakes, the interior, and the engine out of the way, I think we're going to move on to the most important part of the car in my opinion, the paint job. Friend William has to go to work, so we're gonna try and make it nice and quick. The car had to get repainted. I wasn't happy the first time round. If you wanna go back and find all the mistakes I've gone through it multiple times I made an episode called mistakes happen I believe it was episode 13 of the poor man's GTR build I've also gone through it on Instagram with more in detail photos but we had to repaint the car so with this in mind I had to sand the entire car back so we didn't have to peel all the clear coat off instead we just had to get it nice and flat nice and sc scotched up so the new paint would stick and to do that all I did was grab one of these air sanders, dual action air sanders with a foam interface pad and a sanding disc. This isn't the sanding disc we use, but we
The sanding discs we used this time were the 3M500 grit. I've never used expensive, or oh, not expensive, but proper automotive sanding sand, sandpaper. So using the proper stuff this time around was as enjoyable as sanding can possibly be. So I 500 grit the entire car and all the panels. And then I just grabbed the 800 grit soft back sanding sponges and just gave the car one last little sand um, to make sure it's all tippity top and ready for paint. Alrighty, so we're slowly going to finish this video off. I hope you guys have been updated on what has been going on behind the scenes. In the next episode, we are going to paint the car and I'm going to go right into detail of the paint we used, how we did it um, to make it even more relatable. Yes, we did use a spray booth again, but we're gonna run you through everything we did. So hopefully it might inspire a few people to give it a shot themselves because painting honestly isn't that complex. You just need to take your time with it, get the prep work done correctly. This thing, we are not starting yet. It is a Supra for people wondering. It is in pieces and it is a disgusting color. But we're going to start this project once the Sylvia is done and the Skyline is done. Don't want to start anything before that. And there are still a fair few mistakes to be made along the way on that car and that car by the time they're done. So hopefully we're going to learn an extra few little things before starting this. And um, Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you like this sort of content, consider subscribing. Check out our Instagram at Broken Sylvia. William has to go to work, and I'll see you guys later.